Hey small Gundam fans, today we got some Gashapon Senshi Fortes of all different kinds of collections. So we'll start in order. This is from collection number uh, four and let's find out what's going on in this guy. I ordered these so long ago, I don't even know what, what I've ordered. But on the box we do see what other models there are. So within the fourth, uh, the tab is gone. Uh, so wave basically wave four it covers number 19 up to 25 so there's seven there's a secret one interesting but they don't show you what uh, they don't show a silhouette of it so it's got joints you got to put together it's uh, pretty small only 45 millimeters and it comes with a stand so it's, you can get some flight poses and stuff which is kind of neat all right all right you got to put the stand together is there a date on this thing yeah 2017 so it's not that old, actually. So let's figure out which one I got. Maybe this is Blue Destiny. No, I think this is FO19, uh, the Phoenix 01. Yeah, I can just tell by the head. So that's what we're talking about today. I am not familiar with this Gundam at all. I have never heard of it. I don't, I don't think there's model kits of it but correct me if I'm wrong. Looks like you're gonna need some clippers. This one would be really hard to tear away, so. The other ones I think you can probably tear out, but ah, since I'm here, I'll just clip them out. Okay, and then you also have alternate hands, which are nice. Yeah, of course I can't focus on them. Well, you'll see when I'm finished with it, I guess. As you could probably just tear these off the sprue, but I have a feeling if you have too much much extra plastic from tearing it off, it might go go into the hole properly. But I could be wrong. Pretty new to the Fortes. This looks like the flight stand post. Very short. Two additional things here. Oh, probably for the extra hands. Okay. Uh, all right. This is the torso piece or the hip piece. So that pops up in here. There's no front or back, which is nice. It's just universal, but all right. Oh, there's more pieces. What's going on here? So in a way, it's in a way, it's a really low-grade model kit. <sighs> Another one. All right. But what's nice is all the, you know, it's got painted parts already. Uh, painting is the most annoying part of making model kits. I think it's not for me. But I do it anyways because I want the model kit in the end. So looking at this leg here, it's just one piece. It has the foot attached to it. But you can see at the bottom of the foot is painted gold. It's got molded details. Uh, yeah, different colors here. Venting, panel lines. Not bad for something this short. I don't know which is the front. I gotta go back to this reference photo. I mean, seeing how there's gold here, this must be the front. Hmm. Boy, that doesn't really want to go in. What's the deal here? I wonder if the plastic hardens over time. Uh, no, it eventually got in there. All right. So here's the other leg. <sighs> wow, that's really hard, though. All right, well, you know it'll hold this pose pretty well. It doesn't weigh much, and now there's a lot of friction going on there. Ah, I find this hip thing, though. So now the torso, here we go. There's like a lip on that peg, so 
it's not going to fall apart easily. Assuming this is a shoulder, but boy, this is crazy. There's no instructions. And that photo is so small, it's really hard to decipher. But what else could this be? I think these pegs are different sizes. And then there's that as well. This one's really small, it can't be that. It spikes here, a hole. There's like five different attachments going on here. So, no, that's too loose. I think the biggest peg must go into the shoulder. Yeah, okay, let's pretend that's true. And then this thing attaches maybe to here. All right, so it's like a side wing. Or not. Hmm. There's also ball peg things here, too. And I gotta also put the elbow joints together. pops in here okay well there's the forearm that's the question are so difficult to put together. It seems to be the case with my other Senchi experience. The, I mean, I guess it's good in the fact that the, you know the joints are going to be tight, but it's really difficult to do. Like, I want to use pliers, but I know if I use pliers, I'll just gouge up all the plastic. <sighs> wow. I'm going to have to pause and come back. All right. I figured it out how it goes together. That double-ended ball joint thing has to go into this big opening, but I had to use the pliers. It is so hard to get into that recess. I needed pliers to do so. Um, okay, and then this hand will go into this forearm like that. We'll do the fist here. And so this goes on this side here. Oh, no, the uh, big peg goes into the torso. All right, there's a small peg on the back in this little, this weird wing thing. No. Actually, somehow this is backwards. Or not. What is going on here? Oh, this is craziness. So actually, I ended up putting up this ball bag thing in here. So not this big peg here. All right, my bad. The double ball ball joint goes into the shoulder and the in the torso. So now you have the small peg facing the outside. 
which is what this little piece is for because it, all, it has a small hole. Now you have a, a big hole thing here, this weird wing you wouldn't expect to go in the back, but looking at the photographs, it actually is towards the front. So that's kind of weird, but it's there. And then that means this smaller weird wing looking thing is in the back. So that's what I'm getting from the photographs. Well, that one photograph. This one's very loose because I tried to put it around the ball peg thing. Maybe I'll shrink with time. All right. Uh, yeah, that's weird. It's really strange to have these wings on the front. It makes no sense to me. I feel like they should be in the back myself, but then these would have to be in the front, and that would look just as weird. All right. Anyways, the head is pretty neat. It has uh, green metallic paint here for the eye area. Same with the little green up there, the gold there, the red of the chin, and there's a little red green behind that red. So that's nice. Alright, so the head has a decent amount of articulation, left, right. It's just that these weird things are in the way. And then this must be a rifle of some sort. It's kind of a strange looking gun. But uh, that should fit this hand hole. Which it does. Uh, the other gun, you know, if you want to have dual wield, I guess maybe I should, right? I just don't know where I'd put it. Okay, dual wield. And then you yeah, have this weird, weird piece just covers up so much of the front, right? But again, look at the box. It's, uh, it's got that thing in the front. It's very strange, this, this design of this robot. Alright, so that's that. Uh, I'm going to put the extra hands in these holes of the stand. It's nice that you have the splayed out hand option. All right. Okay, and then I'll jam this guy up on the stand. Alright, that was... Uh, Quite laborious. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't fun uh, to put this one together. I'm gonna move this one up so you can actually see the weapon. All right, so that's what's going on with this guy. Let's move on to the next. Hmm. Uh, there might have been static because I had to plug in the phone. Uh, to charge it, but I've since removed the charging cable and the static should be gone from the audio, so I apologize. Alright, so this is Fenshi number 07 collection and came out in 2018, and on the back we have numbers 38 through 42, and I believe it's this guy. Now what's weird about this box is there's no English whatsoever. Oh, you know what? It's not that guy. It's this one. I think this is Full Armor Gundam. Get X103. So, yeah, it's another case where they just don't care about international customers. This is strictly, I think, meant for Japan because it's obviously no English on the, very little English on the packaging. So same dealie here. Got to cut all these things off. find these elbow joints, uh, you, you really need to press them together, so I use the table and something hard to push against it. See, you can hear the, you can hear the snap of that little, uh, there's a little rib inside the, the joint, so it should probably never fall apart. 
which I guess is good. Ugh, so small. Alright, the stand. The last one, I realized it might be easier to push this up into the torso first before putting the legs on. So let's try that this time around. Yeah. Alright, so it's nice that you can, you know, get a little torso twist. So the leg, again, really nicely done. It's just on, you know, on par with, like, uh, the converge line. You know, as far as the molded details go and the paint app as well look how clean it's done oh you know what it might just be the foot's a whole separate piece entirely and that's how they got the color separation so good okay wiggle that on that was pretty easy yeah that was pretty good so yeah you can get you know front back pretty good amount of in out so pretty nice uh, articulation for something so small the head is going to need the antennae, and so I think, look at the eyes. This one's translucent, I think. So that's kind of like Converge. Yeah, those are translucent green eyes. Very cool. And the chin is nice. Uh, the green, the, the reddish or orange on there, and the molded details in the back. The antennae, what's nice about these is the antennae are soft, where the Converge uh, ones are rigid, and I've broken some of them. So this one will withstand abuse a lot more. And then, yeah, you can get... That's a really long neck peg, it seems. But whatever, it works. What is this? Uh, maybe a backpack? Oh, no, it's a molding sprue. All right. So that's a shoulder. I know I gotta get the uh, elbow joint in here. There we go. And where's the forearm? Oh, actually. So the hands are on a different sprue. And again, these these hands are flexible. Look at this. Uh, right, the fingers they're not snapping. So that's nice. These must be the forearms, which again is the, all this nice flexible PVC stuff. So the, the forearm is trapping the, the joint. You don't see much of it, which is kind of neat. Okay. All right. I see. So these are definitely the shoulder joints, this double ball, ball end thing. Uh, let's see if it's easier to put in this one. It's definitely easier than the last one. The last one, for some reason, that plastic seemed to have hardened due to its age or something. This torso is still kind of soft, so yeah, that snapped in place. Right. So you can see a little front, back, a little bit of up-down angle, and then being a ball, you can rotate it, obviously. So it's pretty smart, a smart design. I mean, you gotta remember how small this guy is. So we have four hands again, and we have two weapons. What is this? This is like a bazooka. And what's that opening for, I wonder? This is a rifle, maybe? <laughs> I don't, 
I don't know. I wonder if this goes up in here. Now it's a totally different shape. So I, I don't know why that would be there. Uh, maybe they plan to ha have a different version with like an optic sight or something pegged into that. I don't. I was thinking maybe they join together to make us like a super weapon, but uh, pff, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. So, anyways, with this on this side, I guess I want this bazooka on the left side of the character, so I don't see so much of that hole. Oh, but wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Look at this. There's a hole back here. Mm. That's just referring back to the box. And it looks like a weapon is behind him. Or maybe both. He's just not carrying any of the weapons. I was thinking, why would you have a hole back there? But where, okay, so that's that shape right there on the backpack. So if you want to, you can store this thing on here. Oh boy, that's kind of weird though, because the, the, the actual grip collides with the, that's not well thought out. Oh, it is on both sides, so maybe if I go this way. All right, never mind. Never mind. That does work. Does this have the same hole? It does. Okay. All right. So you can store the weapons on the back. In the yeah, the backpack has decent enough details. Yeah, all around the whole thing's got great details. And look at all the paint colors. Very cool. So maybe on this one, I will use the splayed out hands since the other one is carrying the weapons. Just do a splayed out hand there, and I guess there. Well, why not? We'll just do two splayed out hands. Then I just put the fists down here. So it does seem like the the hands look identical to the last character. So I guess if you lose these, you can probably maybe swap them with a different character's hands. I'm not going to really test that right now because this video is way too long as it is. So it's nice that you can peg these, but the pegs aren't very long as you saw. Uh, so I think it might, you might have to put some poster putty into those peg holes or literally glue them in place if it bothers you a lot. All right. All right. This is number collection 08, which came out in 2019. And looking at the back of this, we're going to talk, see two of them. But again, no English, so that doesn't help us too much. Maybe, I, maybe I'll look it up and put in the title, which ones we're talking about today. This number F051. If you want to learn about little Gundam collectibles, I always use a website called Gundanium. That person has chronicled all the Converge, uh, a lot of these, uh, and a lot of 1400 scale ones, a lot of the mobile suit ensemble ones. Um, so, just a lot of the small, non model kit kind of Gundams that you can buy out there. So, it's Gundanium. Pretty cool. I have no idea who that person is or where they're located. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but they have a great website. Same thing. So 
So forearms again, it looks like, or maybe these are the shoulders, but you gotta clip them off a sprue. Anything else? Yep, these things are on a sprue. But they're all the soft plastic, so that's nice. Hip piece going up through the skirt and then put it in the torso. I think that's the way to do it. There we go. I'm going to assume the red is in the front. So I'll twist that around. Now the... Wow, these are extremely short legs. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's the hip joint, right? And it's got a crazy green, green foot with a gold thing on it. So this is a really short character. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm, uh, the deformation on this is just insane, but I like it. It's just wacky. Look how short this guy is. It's crazy. All right, there's a lot of parts here I'm trying to figure out. I know these things must be the shoulders, right? So, the shoulder joint. Yeah, that, this, this rubber is still quite soft. That wasn't, maybe I could actually put it in with my fingers. Let's see. Yeah, good. All right, so peg holes back here. So maybe this is a shoulder, if I had to guess. But actually, it is. Uh, I think it'll be easier if I put the elbow joint in it now. There we go. And then, so this must be the actual forearm. Doesn't seem to be a left or right difference, so that's good. Hole. Oh, but well this one does have a peg hole. Darn it, I may have put the wrong shoulder in the wrong side. Ah, see, it's really hard to put this in there. I refer back to the box and try to decipher this. Ah, that image is so small. It's I have a suspicion this might be in the back, this hole. So this rocket launch is supposed to be like this, so maybe it's this thing. And that goes into this. I guess that's the only way, right? Yeah, that's the only way. But it seems like this this hole is not deep enough, right? It's I might have to go drill that out because it's definitely it's not deep enough, but it could be deep enough. Look at that. That's only a halfway through. What is this thing? Maybe that goes here. Oh, they're grenades. So, yeah. What is this thing? There's two holes in the head. I don't know if this is like a... Yeah, all right. It seems to be an optic 
uh, thing here. I just put that in by pure luck, but that's where it belongs. So that's kind of neat. But there's another hole on the other side, and there's something sticking out there. But it looks green. Maybe this? Yeah, it looks like it's curved, right? So I think that belongs there. It's like some weird rockets and, I don't know, weird rocket launcher on the head. So I think the head is done. Again, left-right articulation seems fine. Yeah, I think great. You might want to glue some of these parts in. There's a cool knife here. Um, maybe that goes on the back. Actually, I feel like that knife would look cooler there. Now, this is the backpack piece. It has the same shape as that hole in the back. Now, that thing has two holes and a third hole on the back peg. So the hand can hold this machine gun, it looks like. And it does seem like it's doing that in the photo, so I'm going to go with that. These hands are not the same as the last two figures. Uh, also, this hole is not molded well. This is going to take some modification, I think. You can force it through. It's colliding with the shoulder, being so deformed. So you have to just rotate the whole arm out like that. Hmm. All right. This so leg thing fell off. Maybe this goes here. No. Well, maybe it goes here. Oh, okay. Ah, that does make sense there. So you can still spin this. All right, so the rocket launcher has been thought out better than I originally thought. But that still means there's a hole here for the back of this. Can grenades go, go here? You could put the grenades there if you want, or the knife there, up to you. And then this last weapon, I guess you can store here. It's a little cluttered. Or just put it in the other hand, which is what I think I'll do. Let's see how this arm... And that hole looks a little better than the last. Oh, well, that doesn't make sense. Look at that. The magazine is colliding. So you have to hold it on the gun at a weird angle. That, that seems weird. <sighs> so maybe I will actually store that in the back somewhere. I wonder if it can go here. It's just a small hole here, but I don't know what's meant to go in there. I guess you could put the gun like that. It looks a little strange. No, maybe that is. Because clearly that's not working there. I don't... It's nice you can put the knife in different spots. <sighs> yeah, this thing is weird. I guess it's just gonna hang like this. It's just weird that it's sticking out so far in the back for, some, for no reason. 
Now this weird optic fell off. So I think in this case it might make sense to glue some parts in once you know that they belong where they belong. Like this thing, there's no reason to not have this optic glued. Alright, for the sake of it, the video, let's just continue on. This is sorry, 35 minutes. In fact, I'm probably going to will not do this one today. This video is too long. I have other four, four days to come. So, alright, that's, that's it for that guy. So the last one is from the same collection. Yeah, it has to be FO53. I thought I could rip these off the sprue, but no, they're pretty well on there. So I think I gotta clip them. forearms. It's weird that they're molded in two different areas, like attached to the sprue. It's weird. These are the shoulders. The hands. joint. Let's get that through the skirt and get that up into the torso. And I assume the pink or magenta color is towards the front. Pretty good molded details again. really difficult. Alright. I don't think there's a left or right for the uh, shoulders or the arms. mistaken there's a peg on this one so I'm not sure 
what side this should be on. I gotta revert back to the photos again. I think there's a shield on this side, so just gonna pop this over here. Ah, oh, took that whole thing with it. Okay, this backpack thing, got some uh, gray, white, darker gray, or black thrusters there. And that's got two pegs on it. The head, we got orange for the mono eye, although it's not centered, which I guess is okay. I wonder if it comes apart. Oh, what do you know, see? So yeah, you can move the mono eye, so that's a nice feature. Yeah, very cool. I mean, again, this is a really small figure, so it's kind of loose. I have to crazy glue that in place, I think. Well, I'll do it later. I'm going to go crazy glue all these things after this video. You can dip this in hot water to straighten that out if you want. It's nice that it's flexible, though, so it's not going to break. These must be uh, for the backpack. These go here. Yeah, they're maybe verniers, thrusters, or something. And then that shield. Well, it might make sense to put a weapon on, or the fist. I think I'll make this guy have a splayed hand here. Man, that's a really tight fit, what's going on in here. Between the thruster. Or maybe this is upside down. No, it's just, uh, maybe like that. <laughs> it's just a lot of stuff going on in there. It's nice that it has a round peg, though. You can, you know, obviously move it around as you need to. All right, so this one, it'll have a weapon. Yeah, cool looking rifle slash shotgun or something. I'm not sure why the legs fall off so easily, but they do. Alright, I crazy glued some parts together, and uh, yeah, these things are a pain to put together. There's no doubt about it. It's just because they're so small. But once you're finished, you're, they're like awesome. At least that's what I think. I mean, look at all the paint details, all the molded details. Yet they're smaller than Converge figures. Uh, yet they have the same details and actually more articulation than the larger Converge figures. So, yeah, I'm a fan of them. I'll probably get some more. I, I, I know I'm getting some more. So, uh, Thanks for watching today. I'll leave in the description the actual English names of these things in the order I opened them once I figure out what they're called. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.